I have spent the last five years trying to convince people why sustainable investing makes sense. Why investing for positive change makes sense. Why investing to consider a broader set of risks, environmental, social, governance, i.e. ESG, makes sense. And while being able to do all of that, whilst not giving up financial returns, makes sense. If you think about it, it's only common sense, right? So the more I talked about this, the more it hit me. It is not about sustainable investing making sense or not. It's about the fact that our traditional way of investing and our financial systems, that doesn't make sense. So I want to share my personal journey with you of why something so obvious takes so long and so much effort for people to accept and understand, including myself. So I came from the dark side, where money is the key measure of success. So I started my career as a trainee in investment bank, IPOs, M&As. Our job was really to help companies get listed on the stock exchange, to buy other companies, to grow bigger and bigger, to help companies raise money, to expand, often with very little regard to ESG. I remember one incident. In my first year, at the end of that, I got my first bonus. It was a 24-month bonus. That essentially means that I got three years' worth of pay just in that one year. I was 22 at that time. So as you can imagine, I was absolutely ecstatic. I felt like, oh, I'm on top of the world. I've made it. I was determined to do whatever it took to keep going. It was then that my addiction to the idea of money and getting more started. But it was also then that my ignorance of the world also began. I ignored the fact that with that bonus, I actually made more money than my mom that year. With that bonus, I was only a trainee in my first year. I made more money than my mother, who was a primary school teacher for 20 years. I made more money in my first year working than she did in her 20th year of working. I didn't even bother to ask myself, did I deserve it? I mean, no matter how great I did at my job, come on, I was just a trainee. Compared to my mom, whose role and job, day and night, was to instill positive change in young children. Looking back, it just didn't make sense. Looking back, a lot of things actually didn't make sense. 20 bankers working day and night on an IPO and an acquisition without any consideration of ESG, let alone pricing ESG risks properly into their valuation models. Doesn't make sense. Spending $500 on fish and chips over a power lunch. Doesn't make sense. Wearing three-inch heels to work every day that killed my feet every time, toe by toe. Didn't make sense. My ignorance of the world, it continued for a few more years. And then I woke up, and for the longest time I could remember, I felt lost, confused, and stuck. I was stuck in a high-paying job that I no longer enjoyed. I felt empty. My soul was empty. I wasn't happy. And then one day, I met my future boss, who's now my current boss, for the job that I'm doing now. We talked about a lot of things that day. We talked about 
how we can invest our capital for positive impact. We talked about how philanthropy was just not enough to solve a lot of the world's problems, and that we needed to harness the power of the capital markets to make change at scale. We talked about her journey in building up a fully sustainable investment portfolio. We talked about how we should all invest in the future we wanted to create. But more than about the job, we talked about our values. We talked about life. We talked about families. We talked about our worldviews. I knew at that moment that this was my real break, that this was my chance for rebirth, a chance to relearn what I thought I already knew well about the capital markets, a chance for me to open myself up and be the real me at last at work, and the chance to use my skills and experience to make positive impact in the real world a chance to finally connect my heart with the mind at work. Work shouldn't be just about money, power, and status. It should be also about our values, our passion, and our heart. Because without heart, how good can we really be at our job without our heart? How happy will we really be in life? So I started my, my, my new job in 2014, and I remember I hit the ground running. By then, the team was about six years or so into their journey, built up a 100% sustainable investment portfolio, having walked the walk. It was time to then talk the talk, inspire others to also invest their money for impact, rather than just sit idle, chasing after financial returns. We wanted to start a movement around sustainable investing and sustainable finance in Hong Kong. So we launched our impact report in 2016 and started a whole big advocacy journey around that. Very soon we realized one report of one family office was simply not enough to do what we wanted. So we launched a sustainable finance initiative, in other words, SFI. It was a dedicated platform to grow the investor community here in Hong Kong through curated contents, convenings, and co-investment activities. SFI grew quickly from a few to now 25 to 30 active members. We spun SFI off last year so we could refocus on what was truly core to our hearts, climate change. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that climate change is one of the greatest challenges of our times. Not only does it have the power to destroy our physical environment, but cause also great social economic problems, such as climate refugees and the pandemics, like the one that we've been all through for the past year or so. Money, maybe, could be a fix in the short term. But in the long term, a destroyed planet is not going to be livable for anybody. So unless you can afford a ticket to Mars, but then if you can afford a ticket to Mars, why don't you spend that money to save planet Earth today? In Hong Kong, during the pandemic, we've seen a lot of people flock to nature. We always joke, we see more people on the trails in the mountains, and in country parks, than in the shopping malls in Causeway Bay. I guess the good thing of all this is that it brings us closer to nature. But as we enjoy nature, walk through those beautiful trails, swim in the open waters, bike in the mountains, do we truly understand the power of nature, our connection to nature, our reliance on nature, and the fact that nature is now being damaged by human greed and activities. The fact is, we don't cherish nature. For every one dollar that's invested to protect nature and our planet, there's another $140 that is used on activities that destroys nature, such as fossil fuel subsidies. 
nature actually provides 125 trillion US dollars worth of ecosystem benefits. That is actually equal to 1.5 times that of global GDP, i.e. what the world makes and produces in economic value every year. That's enormous, right? And nature has a clear link to our economy. In fact, there's increasing evidence to prove this. A recent McKinsey report shows that if you protect up to 30% of our planet, you can generate more than three times that of economic value, which means for every $1 invested, you can get 3.5 times worth of environmental income. Not only that, it can provide 30 million jobs and 2.4 billion tons of carbon emissions, helping to slow climate change. But we understand, you know, protecting nature is no small feat. It's a big deal. It's been estimated that every year, the financing gap to, pro to protect nature and biodiversity has been more than estimated to be more than 700 billion US dollars. Clearly, philanthropy is not going to be enough to fill this gap. Again, we need to harness the power of the capital markets, rechannel those financing flows, rechannel those investing activities and capital from activities that destroys nature to activities that protects nature. As an impact investor, we try to play our part. In 2020, we gave a grant to a social enterprise. It focuses on marine protected areas in Southeast Asia. This grant was a proof of concept grant to help them design a blended finance facility that can then help them to protect up to 20 marine protected areas across five regions in Southeast Asia. We thought that this grant was very impactful on two levels. The first, from a financial leverage perspective. The grant was a 400,000 US dollar grant, but that could then allow them to raise up to 50 million US dollars worth of funding. That is 130 times leverage, which means that for every $1 that we gave them, they could go out there and raise another $130 from other funding sources. And these funding sources includes funding from mainstream type of capital, banks, pension funds, institutional investors. And this would have been money that would have not otherwise gone in to these regions, to these areas. The other reason why we thought it's so impactful was from an environmental and social perspective. If the project is successful in protecting the 20 marine protected areas, we are talking about 8 million hectares, 8 million hectares of ecosystem reefs in Southeast Asia. That's actually equal to the size of the Czech Republic. And not only that, it also provides economic benefits for up to 1 million people who's living in these regions in the form of income and food security. So to conclude, I want to quote something from Spider-Man. I have two young boys, and they love Spider-Man. And yes, we watched probably too many Spider-Man movies. But Spider-Man says, with great power comes great responsibility. Those of us who have access to large amounts of capital have the responsibility to do good with it. Villains are those who have power but only want more and more. Heroes are those who have power but want to do good with it. Don't get me wrong though. I am not saying that power is only limited to those who have lots of money. No. Power is within each of us. The decisions that we make every day. Where we want to spend our money what products we want to buy, which restaurants we want to eat at, what companies we want to work for, where we want to spend our time, what courses we want to support, 
how we want to live our lives. Sometimes I still wear high heels. Somehow, maybe I've been brainwashed to think that the idea of squeezing all your toes into this tiny triangle, walking on stilts, killing your lower back, might still be worth it. But the question is, when is it too much? Where do we draw the line? For me, I think I'll probably pass on another $500 fish and chips and instead take my boys to the park for a nice picnic. Thank you.